of this all PN junction, right? And also the digital function, I mean, high and low, high and low, right? This is how this is performed with this uh, kind of uh, junction. We'd love, like to know that. It is all of semiconductor uh, device, and semiconductor device is all about PN junction. So today's experiment will be on PN junction characteristics experiment. Okay, listen. <coughs> listen carefully. So this diode or this PN junction uh, is basically responsible for various uh, operations like rectification, then clipping, clamping, and then also uh, amplification. Because a transistor basically amplifies things, and transistor made of PN junction, right? Transistor is like P, uh, I mean, like this, P, N, P. So, or it might be N, P, N. So, there are uh, different types. So that means these are all PN junctions. In between these two, there is a PN junction. In between these two, there is another PN junction. So, it is all about PN junction. And in, in computer, it just a, like, you know, thousands of transistors, your memory, your RAM, your uh, arithmetic logic units, and any other thing that you have in, inside your computer, is even the IC we have seen uh, on the, the other day, is, it's all about these PN junctions. So if you understand this, uh, you will uh, get the whole pictures that how computer work, works, right? So this uh, PN junction is uh, physically looks, uh, I mean, it's, it's looking like this. So you may have uh, some, uh, and you, and then like, have a check that how it looks like, right? So okay, let's pass through. Listen, listen to me. So if you look at this, you would see that there is a listen. There is. Look at this. There is two portions. One is a black black portion, and another is a bit gray portion. Right. <coughs> People standing backside, I do see you. Listen, I'm telling you what, next week will be your first time exam. And one portion is black, right? That portion is P, and another portion is uh, gray, which portion? N. So listen, so how it is made up first? Look at this. First you take a... I mean, a piece of jar and that's, and uh, it's uh, like there are materials which we know as semiconductor material. Germanium. So it has uh, a different silicon. type, semiconductor, I mean, uh, silicon, germanium, right? Silicon is mostly used because silicon is available. Because silicon can be collected from uh, sand, which is, which is too much in numbers in our surface, earth surface, right? There are a huge amount of sands. Do you see that? So these are uh, basically the source of silicons. So that is why silicon is cheap, right? So if you made up a computer with germanium, that takes you some uh, maybe fifty thousand dollar. But if you made up this with the silicon, it will make uh, the price will come down to less than ten thousand dollar. So that is how it is uh, uh, economic to uh, manufacture computer with silicon, right? With silicon semiconductor. So how? Listen, silicon is semiconductor, which means it has got conduction ability in between insulator and conductor. conductor. So conducting particle is like something uh, that has huge amount of space for the electron to flow through it. But insulator is other particle which has got no space at all. The molecules are so rigid that doesn't allow the electron to pass through. So that is how this semiconductor, I mean, this insulator doesn't allow the electro, uh, electricity to pass through. But semiconductor material is uh, lies in between the resistivity of that. It sometimes behaves as an insulator and sometimes as conductor fully. So that means it, that is why it, it is named as semiconductor, right? So under normal state, this diode is an insulator. It doesn't allow the current to pass through. If it is reversed bias, it is an insulator. And when it is forward biased, 
it is a conductor. So that is why it, it is basically we know it as a semiconductor material. Okay, listen. So this semiconductor, so P and junction, both are silicon. The P type as well as N type, both are of silicon. So we can actually, so how can one material be positive again negative? It should be either positive or negative, right? Typically. So how can you make uh, one material with positively charged and another and the same material again with a negatively charged through a process what we know as doping Do doping means adding up impurities. with impurities so impurities can be of two types trivalent and pentavalent so take silicon here also silicon and add some uh, kind of trivalent impurity what do you mean by trivalent and pentavalent Three valence electron or five valence electron. So we will add up some more uh, pentavalent. So this trivalent will make it positively charged, right? So they, they, with, with lots of holes inside, which is positively charged. And pentavalent will make it negatively charged, which means uh, lots of electrons out there. So now we have two types of two different, even though both of them are silicon, but they are different type. This one, namely P-type, and this one, N-type. P does differ for positive, and N, negative. So once we make, uh, once we add this two, this will form this guy, this P and junction. So what, what happens when we add these two? Let's look. When we take this them together, this will become like this. Okay, it will look like this. And let's see what happens then. Once we, listen, we know, hey, do not switch it on, do not switch it on. <coughs> we, we, can, we, can, we can open the AC. Wait, listen. This positively, we, we, we came to know at the very first class that there are two oppositely charged particles in an atom and they attract each other due to electrostatistics law. So that means these are two oppositely charged particles, so they attract, right? So that means at the very terminal point of the junction, that is here, some of the electrons will get diffused with the holes because they attract. So once they combine, they will make a neutral area and the electric field of that neutral area will oppose the other electrons and holes to combine. Do you understand? It is like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining you. Maybe there are some people there and this side and some of this side. So, look, maybe they will fight each other. I mean, these people and these people will fight. So that, that means at the very front people, once they are fighting together, they will be in a, in a mingle, right? So once they, the people stay backside, cannot attack the other people or the people stay in the backside of the other side cannot come to mingle with those other people because they are in a what in a state that opposes others to come you understand so that is happening here once some electrons and holes they go, go, got diffused with each other once they are fighting and they make a neutral area over there that doesn't allow there is the electric field and that electric field electric field value always count in volt so that means uh, it is 0.7 volt for silicon so the amount of electric field is 0.7 volt so if these electrons or holes can have this amount of volt in it then only then it can uh, like you know damage this barrier that is called potential barrier so it can damage this barrier and it can allow the flow through it do you understand? Yes. Got it? Yes. So, for now, if we uh, connect this diode, so under normal state, the diode is like this. This is exactly what uh, what this one is for now. Under normal state, some hole, uh, holes from the positive portion and some electrons from the negative portions, they got diffused each other and they make an electric field that opposes the others to combine. So that is under normal state right now. Okay. 
once you connect this diode with a battery with a external uh, potential source what will happen so if it is positively charged polarity if p is connected with positive and n is connected with negative this positively charged particle will repel this positively charged right that means which will have with the repelling force will be towards the junction right again this negative will repel this negative and this will also push then this negative particle towards the junction so junction will create a force for now so maybe it is like this is a wall some people on the other side of the wall and some people in this side so from this side we are uh, pushing the wall and they are also pulling the wall from the other side so the if okay maybe to break this wall we need some 7 newton force but we are for, for first uh, we are applying some around 2 or 3 newton that doesn't enough force there is not enough force to break the wall so somehow if we gather other people and also they gather other people lots of other people then the force might be enough right so having an having a potential source outer potential source is kind of you know having more people around got it okay let's see so that is the potential so first if we apply some okay let's draw a table that would be the experiment table okay that is a v and that is i listen at the very first time at the very first time this potential source listen do not talk at the very first time this potential source will have maybe point on volt applied right so the force is not enough to break the wall that means what there will be no flow the electron cannot okay electron will only flow when there is no wall right or wall is broken somehow only the electron will flow so that means at point one on volt the electron is no longer flowing that means what when once we apply point one volt there will be no current right at point two volt again which is not enough so there will be no current as we keep the voltage increasing okay listen at point three volt 0.4 volt, 0.5 volt, 0.6 and 0.7. So that's what, listen, at point 3 still the wall is not collapsing. At point 4 some portion of the bricks of the wall might collapse and that might allow a very few amount of electrons to flow which makes uh, maybe 0 0.05 million ampere current. That is in, if we measure it. Okay, at point 5, there will be more bricks, I mean, collapsing. So that means there will be more number of electrons, maybe 0.15 million here. So which is increasing, right? And after that, at, at point 6, maybe uh, one third of the wall has been collapsing. So what happened? Uh, that will allow maybe some 2 point, some 5 million pair current flowing. And at the end, I mean, when it is reaching to 0.7, this wall totally collapse. There will, there will be no wall for now <coughs> at 0.7. Which means what? All the electrons can easily move for now, right? And holes, and they can combine each other. And that will allow huge amount, okay, electron, flow of electron is the current, right? Yes, so sir. when there is more flow of electron, that means huge amount of current. So that means at this, the current will be more than 15 milliampere. So let's look at this diode for now. This, this, this is what we'll prove today. Will allow, will apply these different voltages across this diode. This diode is for now under normal state, so we will make it biasing. This is now for forward biased. If we connect it oppositely, what will happen? It will be reverse biased, right? So at the very first time after this, the diode behaves as insulator. It did not allow the current to pass through, right? So after that, during these voltages, at this stage, it becomes a complete. Conductor. conductor. So it was insulator and it is conductor. So that's what its characteristic. So characteristics is something like how it behaves. If we apply voltages across it, how it behaves. Right. 